The UFC rankings are out and the band is back together. I'm Matt Perino. I'm Forrest Griffin. You, you remember me from that thing that one time called the rankings report. All right, so let's start with the main event. The rankings are out. Rory McDonald drops down to number two. Wonderboy Thompson takes that number one spot. It was a good fight, very technical fight. What were your thoughts on it, and are you happy with the movement? My thoughts were that Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is the most frustrating guy in the world to fight. I felt bad for Rory McDonald. Rory McDonald tried to make it a fight, but he, Stephen Tom, his reactions are just, his footwork is just, He's just good at fighting and a very sneaky guy. Lace traps for you the whole time. You, you hear people use the term lace traps for you and they kind of overuse it. But Steven Thompson is a guy that's actually doing just that. He gets you to step into things. He's really thinking that, that mental chess game the whole time. Not a fun guy to fight. So the movement is perfect here. You got Tyron Woodley at number three. He's about to challenge for the title. Rory falls down to two, Steven at number one. So depending on the outcome of Lawler Sounds versus right Woodley, to me. Yeah. I mean, is Steven next? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, he's been on a tear. He's been doing things that no human has ever done, ever. No human ever. Speaking of rare humans, Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Very successful, oh, again at 170. He looked great, he makes his debut at number 14 in the rankings. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, he's ranked at number four at 155, but he looked good where he was. He, Should he stay? He beat up a guy that has fought as heavy as 205, granted. A little chubby at 205, but he's, he beat up a guy that was bigger, stronger, has KO power for 70, has KO power at 185. You know, he knocks people out left and right. Uh, he used his quickness, he used his timing. That is one of the most complete games I've ever seen out of him. His jujitsu was on point, his wrestling was flawless. Granted, I'm sure there's no way Cote thought he was going to come in and get wrestled like that, but, but such a complete performance, and you got to love the finish at the end. Uh, however, I'll, I'll pose a question to you. The Cowboy we just saw, great. How would he do against the Stephen Thompson we just saw? That, that's kind of what I think I kind of have to ask myself. The way Cowboy kind of plods and walks forward against Stephen Thompson, I say that it wouldn't work too well. Mm. I think, and I'm wrong most of the time, and I don't know how hard the cut is for Cowboy, that he's got a better chance of getting the belt at 55 than at 70. And that's what I think. That's just the circle of logic that I'm following right now. Also very impressive. There's a bunch of great performances bunch, in Ottawa. So but one that really stood out to me, Jojo Calderwood. She moves up five spots after taking out Valerie Letourneau. Great performance, great jump, but only five spots taking out the former challenger. I mean, did maybe the fact that it was at 125 have something to do with it? Yes, it did. We talk about rankings and, and weights and, and fighting out of this class and that you can't be this rank and that rank. It's just not even the same thing. It's literally apples and oranges, or it's apples and different size apples, I guess would be the thing. So you look at Calderwood, who had two back-to-back -back performances that were not kind of up to snuff, even in her own analysis. Right. So now she comes out, takes out Letourneau. I mean, she dominated every phase of the fight. Yeah, you know, she is uh, an odd one, another very notoriously slow starter. Um, and, and she, even thinking back as far as when she was on the show, she's had fights where she looked brilliant and fights where she looked mm, not great. So again, you don't really know what you're going to get, and you don't really know how she's going to match up. As always, he's going to go to our fan comment section where you leave a comment and we talk about it. What's the fan comment? It comes from Steven Fernandez and he writes, Red King versus Steven Thompson wasn't boring. It was very technical. Both guys didn't want to get caught, which showed us both did get tagged a few times each. But in the fifth, when Thompson had him hurt, I think he let him off because it's his friend and he pretty much knew he had the win. No reason to risk getting KO'd as Rory has that power. Good fights tonight on the main card, real good. Okay, I wanted well, to bring he, this one to you for simply this reason. You fought Stefan Bonner two times. You guys are I'm best good. friends. You do commercials together. You, you know, you're, you're friends. Yeah. So what's it like to, to fight a friend and did that have any kind of impact on this one? I think about it not like a sociopath, but like an animal. I need what I need. This other person, they're, they're inconsequential to me. Um, and I think everybody can do that. This is also the speech I give every time I coach the Ultimate Fighter, you know? It's just like cutting somebody off in traffic. It's nothing personal. I just have to get said resources before you get said resources. I just need it more than you, because I'm me and you're you. Speaking of coaching the Ultimate Fighter, so you were on a four week vacation, right? Down in Argentina, did you, get a, you didn't get any suntan though. Yeah, it's winter down there. That's how the world works with the equator and stuff. Hey, who knew? I didn't know when I packed. 
No, I did. I'm not. I'm not stupid. So this this guy, Steven, I don't know about this. He makes a couple points. One, he says they're friends. Two, he brings up what I think is a more valid point. When you had him hurt, don't go in for the kill because you don't want to get knocked out in a fight. You're gonna win, right? Mm -hmm. So he brings up two separate points. I, I don't know if either one of them played a part. I don't think uh, Red King there was that hurt. I thought, you know, he's just having problems with the nose. He just needs a second. He collects himself, and he actually fought the uh, the last 20 or 30 seconds of the fight really well. Um, you know, when I watch that fight though, I feel sorry for people to have to fight Stephen Thompson because he's not offensive as far as throwing punches. He's offensive with his footwork, making you do something that you don't want to do and that he wants you to do. Very tough guy to fight. Um, but but I as would, you say I that, I would fake though, an injury if I had to fight him. But as you say that, though, like you say, look at the top, some of the top guys in the division. You know, Lawler, uh, he just fought Johnny Hendricks, who came forward. Even Tyron Woodley, who's a wrestler, will come forward. So. I he can still be kind of entertaining and finish fights yeah, with yeah. these kind of guys that are gonna have to do something against them. I might be crazy, but I think that Roy McDonald was actually the biggest test for Steven Thompson on his way to the belt. And I am actually crazy. As always, go to UFC.com for the complete rankings. Next week will be better. I, you know, I've, I've had a long layoff. I'm, I have ring rust from doing the rankings report. You know, I've been, I'm like, where's the steak? There's no wine here, what the hell? Place. I got to pick up after myself in this country uh, to live in a hotel room for a month straight. <laughs> it's not that bad.